Welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. In this Radar and ARPA series, we've been building your knowledge step by step. In part one, we explored the basics of radar, its principles, limitations, and carriage requirements. In part two, we learned about radar setup, navigation aids, blind sectors, and stabilization modes. If you missed those, don't worry. You can check them out using the I button at the top of your screen. Now, in part three, we're taking things one step further. We'll start with how to check radar performance, then move on to parallel indexing, the difference between true and relative motion, the use of north up and head up displays, and common radar errors like spoking, staring, and angle of squint. So stay tuned, because this is where theory meets real navigation. Let's begin with something that every officer of the watch must know, checking the radar's performance standard. Step one, preparation. Make sure the radar is powered on and set to transmit mode. Confirm that no one is near the antenna before you start. Now, select a suitable range, usually 24 nautical miles, unless the radar maker recommends otherwise. Step two, activate the performance monitor. Find the Performance Monitor button on the Radar Control Panel. On some systems like JRC or Furuno, it may appear in the Test or Maintenance menu as PM On. Step 3. Observe the output. When activated, a plume or arc will appear on the radar screen. On digital radars, you may also see a bar. The bar length shows transmitted power, and the plume represents receiver sensitivity. Now let's continue. Measure and compare. Use the Variable Range Marker, or VRM, to measure the maximum length of that plume or bar. Compare it with the reference value given by the radar manufacturer. That value was recorded when the magnetron was new, and it's usually found on a sticker near the radar panel. The difference between the two readings shows how much the radar's efficiency has changed. Record your findings. Enter all the measured values, differences, and the radar's condition in the radar logbook. This keeps an accurate record for maintenance and watchkeeping. Extra confirmation. Switch to the minimum range and check that your own ship's echo appears at the center of the screen. If it does, that confirms the radar is transmitting and receiving correctly. Oral tip. If asked, when should you check radar performance? The answer is, at least once every watch, after power up, and whenever radar performance is in doubt. Now let's move on to parallel indexing, often called PI. This is a radar navigation technique where a line is drawn parallel to your ship's intended track at a fixed distance from a reference object, such as land, a buoy, or a headland. It's an active monitoring method. As your ship moves on its heading, fixed objects appear to move in the opposite direction. This helps you keep a real-time view of your ship's position relative to the planned track. The best part is, it works in all visibility conditions. You can use it in high traffic areas, coastal waters, and during pilotage operations. And it's completely independent of external navigation aids like GPS. Oral tip, if the examiner asks, which stabilization is used for parallel indexing? The answer is ground stabilization, because navigation here is relative to land. All right. Let's move on to one of the most important radar concepts, true motion versus relative motion. In true motion, both your ship and other targets move across the radar screen in their actual courses and speeds. The reference is the ground. That means your ship's echo moves across the display according to its true track over the seabed. In relative motion, your ship stays fixed at the center of the radar screen, while all other targets move in relation to your movement. Here, the reference is your own ship moving through the water. Now, when do we use each one? True motion is used for navigation, coastal passage planning, and position fixing. Relative motion is used for collision avoidance, 
and for assessing CPA and TCPA. For stabilization, true motion is ground stabilized, while relative motion is C stabilized. Let's take an example. In true motion, land features drift steadily across the radar, showing the true direction of set and drift. But in relative motion, another vessel's echo appears to move depending on your own movement, helping you see whether you're on a collision course. So, remember this. True motion for navigation. Relative motion for collision avoidance. Now that we've understood motion, our next topic is the radar display orientation, north up versus head up. In a north up display, north always stays at the top of the radar screen. The radar is stabilized to the gyro compass and targets appear with their true bearings relative to north. This makes it easy to compare with a nautical chart, which is why north up is perfect for navigation, coastal passages, and parallel indexing. However, when your ship alters course, the whole radar picture rotates, which can be a little confusing at first. In contrast, the head-up display keeps your ship's heading fixed at the top of the screen. It's stabilized to the ship's own compass heading, so the radar picture always matches what you see out of the bridge windows. That's why it's commonly used for collision avoidance. The drawback? The radar picture rotates every time you change course making it less stable during maneuvering. To sum it up, north up, best for navigation, head up, best for collision avoidance. Oral tip, if asked, which one do you normally use at sea? Answer, head up. If asked, which one is better for coastal navigation or parallel indexing? Answer, north up. Let's move on to some common radar errors, spoking and staring. Spoking looks like radial spokes coming out from the center of the radar screen. It's usually caused by synchronization faults, transmitter or receiver malfunction, or a poor power supply. The effect, target detection becomes very difficult. Staring means the radar picture freezes and targets don't move as expected. This can happen if the scanner isn't rotating properly maybe due to servo motor or bearing failure. Sometimes it's an ARPA processing error. The effect, targets appear stuck or show false movement. Oral tip, if this happens, call the master, switch to other navigational aids like AIS, ICDS, or a second radar. Record the defect in the logbook, inform the company and arrange for repair. Now, our final topic, the angle of squint. This is an error in radar bearing measurement caused by misalignment between the scanner and the ship's heading reference. It happens when the radar antenna is not properly aligned with the ship's fore and aft line, or if the heading marker on the screen is off. The effect, targets appear at slightly wrong bearings. That can lead to plotting errors, wrong CPA or TCPA readings, and even navigation mistakes. Correction. Compare radar bearings with visual or gyro bearings of a fixed object. If there's a difference, apply a correction or recalibrate the heading marker. Always keep checking alignment during passage. Oral tip. If you notice an angle of squint, apply a temporary correction manually. Inform the master, record it in the logbook, and arrange for it to be fixed as soon as possible. And that's a wrap on Radar and ARPAH, Part 3. Today, you learned how to check radar performance, use parallel indexing, understand true and relative motion, choose between north up and head up displays, and handle common radar errors. But our journey doesn't end here, because in the next and final part, we'll unlock the full power of ARPA, the automatic radar plotting aid. That's where radar meets decision making and it's the grand finale of this series. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you don't miss part four. Until then, keep learning, keep navigating, and remember, a smart mariner is always a safe mariner. See you in the final episode.